The title of tonight's message is this, Immaculate Reception. Instead of Immaculate Conception, how many of you know that's the story of Jesus? The Immaculate or a God Conception. How many of you know we got to have some God receptions, some things that we hold? Um, I actually titled it another way, uh, Reception, Catch It. Uh, in other words, the things, the, the way that faith comes, uh, we know that it comes by Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. We've heard that. But I, I just want to kind of break some things down tonight and lay a foundation uh, for, for us um, in a world where there's crazy and there's chaos and there's all kinds of things. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there's, there's so much mistruth out there, uh, you really don't know what to believe. A matter, I was talking with uh, someone this, this weekend about how even in the political spectrum and, and there's like things are able to be manufactured, created uh, to the fact that it just seems like there's so much fake news that we no longer pay attention to any news. How many of you have ever been, how, how many think we're there? Like there's so much, like how many people still watch the, like Fox? Seriously, just, just go ahead and raise your hand. Like not very, a few, kind of. And, you, and you, when you watch it, you're kind of like, you know, like maybe, uh, what are they telling me that I'm supposed to not know? So you're like, if they told me this, then I really need to know this. I, is that is that not how kind of how you listen, or you kind of listen with just this underlying, is this true? Because there's so much. And so in this season and in this time, here's what I want to tell you uh, tonight: is you cannot trust your eyes. You can't trust your eyes. How's that? You can't trust your eyes. You can't trust your eyes, you can't trust your feelings, you can't trust what you see on Instagram or Facebook or CNN or Fox or all these kind of things. You can't, you can't trust it. Now, am I saying that you have to be like, oh, I don't trust it? No, I'm just, just saying you, our, re, our reliance has to move. It has to move from our eyes and from what we hear. Can I tell you, not only can you not trust Fox and CNN and all these other things, you can't trust somebody's here's what's really happening videos. <laughs> can I tell you, some of those videos and many of those videos are just to that much more distort truth? Okay. Aren't you thankful that you don't have to, uh, have to rely on that to know and understand truth? Um, it actually says this, we're going to pick up here, uh, we're going to pick up in John and then we're going to, uh, John chapter 14, one and two, and then I'm going to jump back up at him at the very beginning. Jesus says this in a time of transition. I believe now more than ever before, we're in a season of transition. There's times of seasons of changing. And, uh, here's what he says. He says, do not let, do not let. Let me just go. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He goes on to say, my father's house are many rooms. If we're not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. So this is a season where Jesus is like, I'm about to go, right? It's a season of transition. And he says, you, to the disciples, do not let your heart be troubled. It's interesting. He, he, Jesus' concern is, for them at that moment is not uh, the persecution. It's not about, it's about the heart. Why? Because in the middle of the heart is the ear. You can look at that word right there. Do not let your heart, do not let your hearts, in the middle of the heart is the ear. The Bible tells us in Proverbs twenty twenty seven that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. First Peter chapter 3, 7, talks about, or uh, 3, 4, talks about how, um, you know, how the women are to adorn not the outward side, but the inner man of the heart. Like, so our spirit is really our inner man, the inner man of the heart. And, and here Jesus is saying, there's a time of transition happening, but I don't want your heart to be troubled. I don't want your heart to be troubled because, uh, because the way you're going to hear is through your heart. Okay? And this is what you're going to see this here in just a moment where he speaks. And even the words that he speaks, um, they're not to hear. They're to hear. And we're going to lay this foundation at tonight. And you're going to, we're going to learn how to resist the devil a little bit tonight. We're going to learn uh, ultimately just about immaculate reception. Okay? And it's just so important, actually, uh, this weekend. Um, I had the honor and the privilege, um, something the Lord had, had, had spoke to my heart about beginning. Um, and that is uh, taking young men 
uh, on a place of retreat slash uh, a time of impartation and um, just becoming a man and imparting a few things that uh, I believe every man should know. And so uh, this, there's some, to some degree, I'm going to teach the first, a little bit of the first message that I shared with them, and that's about their heart, okay? Just, just a portion of that, okay? So um, if you have your Bibles tonight, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we've read this, maybe we've heard it, but maybe we just read it again, let the Lord speak. Father, thank you so much for speaking to us tonight. We thank you that as we open your word, you said light would come. We thank you that the teacher is here. Uh, Holy Spirit, teach us, show us uh, what we need to know, uh, rearrange uh, and, and the formations uh, of our heart that are not um, that were not of you, uh, to where we'd see it clearly, and it would just be um, as if pieces come together. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so, Proverbs three five through seven or six rather, it says, "Trust in the Lord with all of your." Heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So he directs our paths. Uh, how does he direct our paths? When we submit our heart to him, right? When we trust the here and what we see? No, when we trust here. Because this is really important. Now, when, what, he, what Jesus told his disciples, do not let your heart be troubled, Right? He says, don't let your heart be troubled in a time of transition because what he's going to do is he said, he's, and we're going to get to this, you've been walking with me, buddy, buddy. You've been leaning your head against my chest, John. You remember? You washed my, you, people washed my feet. We sat around, we ate and we drank together and you recognized me or so you thought you did by what? By by what this. Matter of fact, there's only one person that recognized Jesus as the Messiah, and it was Peter. And the Bible tells us that his eyes didn't show him that. He said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. He said, blessed are you. You got in on something that is the way that I'm going to deal with you and all of mankind from now on, or coming soon and from now on. Okay? So, <clears throat> again... Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is a, a scripture in, in Proverbs, and this is how God still deals with us today. We're going to look at this. Um, John chapter 1, 1 through 5. I want to lay this foundation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. In other words, you could say it like this. God made all things through His Word. Okay? Uh, and he, this is how He still works. He still works with the Word. Okay? Uh, without, not, without Him, nothing was made. And in him was the life, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness uh, has not overcome it. If you jump down to verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Ultimately, what we're talking about is Jesus was the word manifest. Jesus was the word manifest. And how people associated with him, or how the disciples associated with him, was like this. With their eyes and with what they felt. And, and the Lord's like, I'm going to change how I deal with you, and I'm going to go away. In John chapter 14, 15, 16, he's talking about how I'm going to give you a comforter, a helper, an advocate, a strengthener, one that's a standby. Uh, we, we talk about paraclete and all that. I'm not going to get into all that. But one who's going to show you things to come, right? And one who's going to lead and guide you into all truth. How many of you need a little guide into what's truth? I think we all do right now. And so there's a, there's a way for, I believe God is getting you and me more and more dependent upon the, His Spirit uh, instead of what our eyes are, are, are seeing, okay? So <clears throat> we know that Jesus was made flesh and He dwelt among us. So, he go, so He's saying this, um, the Word, the Word. He says, now, don't let your hearts be troubled because this is how you're going to hear from me, okay? The Holy Spirit speaks to you uh, here, not here, but here, Okay? So let's go here. So we know that Romans chapter 10, 17, um, faith comes by hearing God's word. Is that correct? Like faith is not possible. Uh, faith doesn't come by even a testimony. I can tell you about something. Faith doesn't come from evidence. I, can, I just want to see. He's like, no, you're an evil generation seeks a sign. 
So he's saying, a sign will not prove to you who I am. A sign won't prove. A sign won't prove. Someone's testimony won't prove. There's only one thing that will prove to you and me who he is. There's only one thing. And we're going to look at that here in just a moment. It is, it is his word. John 6, 63 says this. It is the spirit which gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So faith comes by hearing spirit words. Faith comes by hearing spirit words. Where do you hear spirit words? In your spirit. This is so super simple, right? Like the word of God is spirit. Jesus was spirit made flesh, and he's moving the disciples back to the place of hearing spirit again. Blessed are you, Simon, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. The spirit of God spoke to you, and that's what you heard. And you acknowledged what you heard here above, well, some say this, and some say that, and some say this, and, but what do you say? And he answered, not according to what he saw, but according to what he heard here. This is so vital for you and me concerning healing, concerning, um, I don't know what movies were to watch, concerning uh, stealing. Like, why is stealing not okay? Why? Because somebody told you it was wrong? Or because the Lord told you it's wrong? It says it in his word, which his word is what? Spirit. John 6, 63. The word of God is spirit. The word of God doesn't always make sense here, does it? Does anybody ever find that out? Like it doesn't always make sense, but it always, it confirms some things here. Or it brings direction. It brings correction. It even when you're like, well, I had the right, but you're like, I'm not right. <laughs> you ever been there? I had the right. It all made sense, but I'm, I know that's not right, and i got to make an adjustment, or I gotta, something's got to change here. It's not right. i got to apologize. Well, I shouldn't have to apologize. or You, you know what I mean? And, and your heart is talking to you. Not your heart. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. God's talking to you. He's leading you to a path of truth and a path of freedom, a path of, of all of God's promises to you and me. Okay? And we know that Satan likes to come for what? The word. From the very beginning, he comes for the word. And so he'll call into question what you receive here by, by getting you and me to look here. So the Bible tells us in, in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, so resist the devil and he will flee, right? Resist the devil. Let's, let me just, let's just pause here for a moment and let's establish what resisting the devil really is. And let's just define devil for a moment. Diablo. Dia, meaning dia, diameter, like from one side to the other. You know, and, and if you went to school, you did math and, and they had the radius, right? And you take that times two and you get the diameter and then you take it times pi, 3.14, and you find the circumference or, you know, like all of these kind of things. It's, it's, it's fun. I love that part of math, base times height, width, depth, the volume, you, you learn these things. But diameter just literally means from one side to the other on a circle. Your mind is kind of like this melon, right? You kind of have this melon and from one side to the other. This is how the enemy works. Dia, balo, dia, diameter, balo, where we get the word ball, which means to throw, okay? Uh, and so the, the enemy likes to throw something at you that is so great that it would, doesn't just hit one side. It goes from one side to the other, and it's, it's really well thought through, right? That's how he works. So here's what he says. Resist what's well thought through. <laughs> okay, maybe not fully that way, but this is, this is how he works. So I'm, what I'm not saying is be an idiot, but the Bible does say that the righteous are to walk, the just are to walk by Faith and not by sight and not by the Bible does say that there's a way that's so much different or higher than man down here. There's a wisdom that descends from above. The Bible says that God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. In other words, there's some things and some decisions that you and I need to make from here that don't and won't make a whole lot of sense right here. That's a fact. Okay? And so you can't trust here. And you don't trust these and you don't trust these. Did you hear what happened? Blah blah blah. Did you hear? Did you hear? Uh, you're telling me, but, but what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is that ain't truth. 
It's important for us to recognize that. And we have, we, we, you can recognize truth when you spend time with the spirit of truth or the words of truth, okay, which is the Bible. This is why the Bible is so vital for you and me. It's interesting how God made such a point to find men to pen uh, what he's saying and, and to pass it on, not only to pass it on, but to preserve it so that it would be a, 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 a foundation, a guide uh, uh, for you and me in, here on this earth. All of God's scripture is God-breathed, inspired. This is, we, have to, we have to settle this, that the word of God, Timothy, what it is, what it's, that it is valuable, that it's able to bring correction, refute, correction. Oh, this is wrong. The word, okay? Let's keep going here. So, you hear, you, you hear spirit words in your inner man or your spirit or your hidden man of the heart. And that word or that term, hidden man of the heart, you'll see uh, a few different places in Scripture that kind of talks about your spirit as being an inner man, okay? Again, man being three parts, spirit, soul, and body, okay? Let's go here, and this is this transition uh, of God leading his disciples. Again, do not let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to send you a helper, Holy Spirit, and he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. Jesus is crucified. He dies. He's rose from the dead. And the disciples, really the darkest day in history. Um, people of faith, or so they thought, uh, they were pretty in the dumps. Uh, they were back to fishing. They were on their way, and their hope was gone. We're going to see this. Luke chapter 24, 13 uh, through 16. We're going to read really pretty much most of Luke 24. And we're going to pick this apart. And then we're going to play a, a video here at the end, about a 20-minute video. And it's really talking about healing and resisting the enemy. I really feel like today or tonight I uh, wanted to play a whole lot more. And based, if, if I don't get to where I need to get, you're just going to get the link and you can take it home as homework. Okay? Uh, you can listen to it in double time speed on, on YouTube twice and get it in you. Okay? I don't know how you listen, but I listen, I listen again and again and again, and I'll pick up different things different times. Okay? Um, so I'm not guaranteeing you we're going to get to the video. All right? um, I was going to try to do it double time to y'all, and it looked, sounded like Mickey Mouse. So, all right. so Luke 24, 13 through 16. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to the village called Emmaus. Now this is after Jesus is crucified, uh, and, or actually a couple days after. And um, Jesus had risen from the dead already. Um, but it had been some time. It had, some time had gone by. Have you ever been there? Some time had gone by. And you're not seeing what you'd like to see. And, um, and I taught something actually incomplete. Or I, I, I won't say wrong because I was making a point. But I want to make sure it's heard correctly. When I, I taught something um, a little while ago. But how all you need is a different word, you know? Like if you went into a doctor's office and they said, you know, you have stage four ovarian cancer. And I'm like, really? Uh, I don't even have ovaries, right? Like I, I would know that they got the wrong file, right? Yeah. But if you were a woman and that, that word came in and like you would, like the breath would be sucked, sucked out of the room. And, you'd be like, oh. and if the doctor said, oh, oh my gosh, is your name uh, Paula? And you're like, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm Amber. Oh, we got the wrong file. Oh. You, you get a different word, you get a different, right? And so I said, so, all you, so many times, all you need is a different word, right? But really, that's not the truth. Because so many times, you and I want a different word. We want an antidote to the problem. Instead of that which is the cure, the true cure, and you don't need a different word, you just need the word. Because storms will come. But the only thing that will stand and remain, like antidote, like things are going to change. Another word, another word, another word, another word. But the house is to stand. And so you, what we need to establish, and so many times when, when a storm comes, we're looking to calm the storm more than we're looking to just be in a place of standing firm and resisting the enemy. Resist the storm instead of looking for an antidote. And we need God's word on the matter, period. Not an antidote, not a quick cure, not a quick fix. Count it all joy when you fall into it. Like, we, we don't like hearing that, but the reality is I need to secure God's word so that my foundation is, is secure. 
What's my foundation? If I never have, if there's never a storm and I get a quick cure, a quick release all the time, then do I, do I really have roots? Do I really have foundation? Do I really have strength to stand? When he tells me to stand, having done all the stand, am I really, do I have the armor on? He says, he talks about getting armor on. Okay, that means there's going to be a battle. And, and we, you've maybe heard the statement that strong men make good times, right? Good times make weak men. Weak men make bad times. And we're kind of, we need some strong men. We need some strong women. We need some strong men of, and women of God. In other words, when a storm comes, we're able to stand on God's word and not just weather the storm, but come through it like a shining beacon, a lighthouse, keeping the light on in the storm. I think about a house built on a rock. What kind of house do you see? Do you see the little the big bad wolf and the three little pig house, or do you see a lighthouse? What kind of house do you see? Because like you could batten down the hatches house, you know, like close the deals, or you can be the house out on the point that's still continuing to do and hold forth, hold forth the word of truth and hold forth. This is the, this is the house he's talking about. And the storm came, but the house didn't fall because it was built on a rock. Have you ever seen those pictures? Like you see this lighthouse and it's not on a beach. It's on a rock and waves are hitting it all the time. And so, anyway, so here we are. There, there's a couple days later. They're, 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 through, they're in a storm. And it says, Now, behold, two of them are traveling the, 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 uh, the same day to the village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Okay? And they talked to, uh, uh, together of all the things which had happened. You know, oh, you know, all the things that had happened, all the sadness. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes, somebody say their eyes, their eyes were restrained so they did not know him. No, he, they knew Jesus, Jesus from a long way off. Crowds followed Jesus. Crowds could get around the lake. He would go to the other side. They'd be waiting for him. And they're like, oh, that's him. That's him. Yep, that's him with the beard and the, the long hair and, and the sash. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of kidding there. All right. One day it will be faithful, okay, but all right. <laughs> but probably not then, right? But they could recognize him. They, the, the woman said, if I just but touch the hem of his... If I, so she, she, she could say, nope, that's not him. It's, it's through the crowd, that's him. She could recognize him. But now, he said, don't let your hearts be troubled, okay? I, I'm going to go away, and I'm going to send you somebody else. And he's going to be your helper. But the way he's going to help you and the way he's going to lead you, we're not just going to go with us four no more. We're not just going to be us 12, right? I'm going to, he's going to be with you at all times. And whenever you have a question, he's going to, okay? And so here he is, and he says, it says, verse 16, but their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. They could not, they didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can I tell you that we're in that place? A lot of, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what to believe. Because your eyes are they're, they're restrained, right? Like there's just so much. Okay, anyway, so it goes on to say, or we'll get to there in a second. So Christ no longer, he, he's, he's laying this out. He no longer wants them to know him by their eyes. God's not moving. <sighs> Why? Because of what you see? God doesn't want you to know things by your eyes. I guess I'm not because of how I feel or how I see, or how, this is, this is important. These are so foundational, and the Lord's like, I want your heart to not be troubled. I want you to be able to hold something in your heart. I want you to be able to hear in your heart. This is why when your heart's troubled, you can't be making decision, major life decisions. This is one of the other things we talked about to these young men. I want to talk about going through adversity. I've seen more decisions, major life decisions made when your heart is hurt or troubled. And then here's, what the, the, here's the line. God told me. <laughs> if your heart is troubled, if your heart is hurt, if your heart is offended, and you're saying that God told me, can I tell you, you're hearing something other than God. David strengthened himself in the Lord First, 
then got rid of the hurt and the weeping and the crying and the tears, even though everybody wanted to stone him. And then he heard from the Lord. It matters, it matters what the condition of your heart is to move forward. If your heart is not whole, you're going to have to wait until you get it dealt with and deal with the Lord. This is why the Bible says, when, like, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you, because your adversary at the end, this is 1 Peter 5, he, he's looking for whom he can devour. Did you know that so many times we devour ourselves by simply moving according to what he's, his roar? Can I tell you, in Philippians, he talks about um, um, be careful, be filled with care for nothing, but with everything, let your, right? And then think on these good things. If you're still thinking about, like David, when he lost his wife and his children and, and all of his men, if you're thinking about that, your heart is troubled. If your heart is troubled, you don't, you're not thinking on what is pure, what is those things, then you're not in a place to, to really make the decision, a life decision. You need to be in a place until you get back and you give that to God and you know God is taking care of you. Anyway, I don't know how we got off on that. But Christ no longer wants them to know them through the natural senses or by natural means because there's a new and better way to walk with God. As a matter of fact, there's the way that God intended us to walk with him. How many of you ever, have ever uh, heard about God walking with Adam and Eve in the garden? Anybody? No. Did, can I tell you it didn't say that? Like, was it a shining orb that went through? I mean, I know we have these colored pictures, you know, of like kids' books with the hair over the boobs and, you know, like, but where's God? Like Adam and Eve and the serpent, but like God didn't walk with them. It says in Genesis 3.8, it says the voice of God walked with them. It doesn't say God. Show me where. The voice of God. They, like, he called out to them. This is what we see. That when, God, when, when they're like, uh, you look at it yourself. You go read Genesis. And you'll see that God walked with them. What walked with him was a voice. Interesting. You know what's walking with you still? And what he came to do? If one man, by one man sin, Adam... So two death reign, how much more by one man, Jesus Christ, this is Romans, how much more would life reign? Okay, in other words, that there was this redemption and returning back and now giving every man free choice. This is pretty, it's pretty cool to think, and this is how much the word matters. I'm, I'm getting back to the place that, of this, that this right here, this is not a to-do. This is the get-to. This is a, oh, wow, it's spirit. Your words were life. Like he said, says that, and I did eat them, like honey. Like they, they, were, they, they, they were health to me. They, they healed my soul. They, they, they restored, like th this, is, this is not a have to, this is a get to. And, and, and when we re recognize that, that this is, uh, the, the, the value of this and how this right here is such a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the place, in a place where, the, in a world where darkness is everywhere and people are searching for light, if you and I will keep this before us, we not only will we shine like light, Matthew, right, Matthew, but will we, will we look like light, but we will have light to navigate and to move ahead. You're going to, if you... All right, yep, that took all my time for the video, so we're not going to get to it. 1 Kings uh, 19, 11 through 13. Again, I think it's important to lay some foundation of Scripture um, about who, wh what do you see when you see God. So he's like, uh, Lord, show me, show me your glory. Show me who you are. I want to see you. So the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain, 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. Stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Oh, you know what? Do you feel that? God's here. Can I tell you, I had a pig chase or like almost eat me a few days ago. Like, and I had, and it wasn't God. Can I tell you, I had goosebumps everywhere. And it wasn't God. Can I tell you, you can get the same whoo, Mufasa feel? Whoo, 
at a rock concert or a ball game, electric feeling. You don't approach God based on feeling. Can I tell you, you don't need a song and a keyboard. I'm not saying we, we don't have it, it's, we don't come into his presence, but, but I'm telling you, wherever you're at, you don't have to feel him to know him. You, 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 to know he's there. You don't have to have an earthquake or a shattering or a red car drive by in the, the next car to know he's there because that's not how he approaches and wants his children to know him. They want, he wants us to know him according to his word. Let's keep going here. It wasn't in the wind after the wind. It was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. Oh, God moved because there was a shaking. Oh, we, we just had church tonight. Why? Why did we have church tonight? Because we did a dance? Because somebody fell over? Can I tell you that just, just recently I was with Pastor Willie George uh, at a pastor's retreat. It was so cool. Awesome times. Just God talk uh, with eight other pastors and Pastor Willie. And he was talking about the move of the Spirit. Actually, Pastor Austin asked me a question What do you, just recently this weekend. Like, what do you think it means when I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh? And I said, I think that we think the Spirit being poured out is based on what we've seen in our last 30 or 40 years of what we know life to be. Like the, word, be, the pouring out of the Spirit is so just what you know. And Lester Summerall, <coughs> uh, Pastor Willie George had uh, worked under Pastor uh, Lester Summerall, and he worked overseas predominantly, and he asked the question, um, you know, when you lay hands on people overseas, do people just fall over? And he said, no, that's mostly American church or some parts of Africa that have been, uh, that are, that are um, a part of or the, and have received uh, television and or magazines. Like, in other words, this is what God did. This is what it looks like for God to move. This is like, oh, here's what you do. You cut the end off the ham, and you cut the other end off the ham, and you put it in the oven. Well, why do we do that? I don't know. Mama did that. Yeah. And Mama did that. This is what it looks like for God to move. Can I tell you what prophecy looks like? Well, uh, the Lord saith in the... Well, that's why a lot of times we're not prophesying. And the Lord's saying something right here. And he's the same way he led you to say that's the one to get married. Or this is the church you're to be that you'll get the inward witness. You'll get an inward witness to say, hey, buddy. And you'll say something that God says. And you know what you get to be? You get to be you. God through you. The vessel, pure, clean, from the inside out. It, it, these things matter. It matters what it looks like. It matters what it looks like. We get so caught up in what our eyes see and, what we, and, and we miss how God moves. We're looking for earthquakes or shattering and blah, 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 instead of just knowing that when I pray, if two or more agree on earth is touching anything, it's done for them. Well, let's shake to get it done. Well, if, it, he, if he causes you to shake, great. But you don't have to, but you can. And you can if you just want to. And he's not, a, he's not annoyed because you're you. Because if you want to be a nut, be a nut. If you want to be goofy, be a goof. Okay, be you. You do you. Like in that sense. Like personality is wonderful in the kingdom of God. And if you rejoice and do cartwheels and shout and because of what God has done for you, then do it. But don't put a stamp on what is and is not based on what these see or these hear. Because you'll limit yourself so often to saying, well, I don't know. I don't feel the... Can I tell you, like, so often the greatest moves of God is when I feel nothing. Because then it would be the fire's here. Okay? So only if I get a tingle, then God can move. Because I don't see that in Scripture. This is, I want to go back to this. I don't see that in Scripture. And so the enemy is really good at wrestling things away from us, um, a Scripture away from us, because we hold to promises in the Word, and, and we have to see them to believe them. But can I tell you, seeing them is not believing them? It, when, it, it, if I see them, and I'm really not believing them, he said, bless are the, it, I, I, I'm looking at them, and, and then if I don't see it, then guess what? Well, I guess God didn't move today. 
Okay, let's keep going here. So, <clears throat> wasn't in the earthquake, an earthquake came, and then there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after that came a gentle whisper. Some translation just says a still small voice. And that's where the Lord was. Can I tell you that's where he still is? Can I tell you just even this, this weekend we had an incredible time uh, uh, in, a, in a little room after eating back, deer backstrap in gra- covered in gravy, which is probably what set the stage for the Lord to move. <laughs> Come on. I mean, <laughs> the gravy, you know. Um, there wasn't a guitar. But there was hearts. There was hearts. And where there's hearts, there's ears. Where there's ear, God, you have my heart. Where he has your heart, where he has your ear, guess what? You got, you got his word. You have his word. You have his word. Can I tell you, like, that there was dads praying over kids, and they were getting God's word for their kids. Like, like I, I, I had seven dads pray, and, and I, I'll say it this way, this boldly, prophesy over young men that probably were like, this is so uncomfortable in the name of Jesus, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Not blah, blah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. no disrespect there. Yeah. But just like, blah, up and out. God was speaking. Why? Because the hearts were there. Because the hearts were there. A troubled heart is not a present heart. So let's go back to Luke 24, 17. Then he said to them, what kind of conversation is this? And this is, let me say this. This is why, um, this is why these questions, um, like the enemy wants to come for the word and he wants you to look at Aunt Velma or Aunt Betty or Uncle Sam who didn't get something that the word said you could get. Because if your heart is troubled, right, then what's happening is you're not able to catch what he's even saying. So the word can come forth, but you're not having an immaculate reception. You're not hearing from him because you've got your troubled, this troubled heart. Okay? <clears throat> now, am I saying you can't ask the Lord a question? No. If you're seeking an answer, if you're seeking light, and you're seeking what he says... There's a difference between asking the Lord a question and questioning God. He he is the judge. He is the king. He is never to be on trial. Your Honor, Your Honor, may I approach the bench? How many of you know there's a different... Then why don't you take that seat? Where were you when I... Different feel, isn't it? Yeah. So... Verse 20, uh, chapter 24, 17. He said to them, what kind of conversation is going on here, guys? Like, hey, what are you guys talking about? They were talking about everything. Jesus comes up. They couldn't see him with their eyes. He, was, he no longer was letting them recognize him. And he says, what kind of conversation is this that you're having? Because you're really sad. Well, you're walking sad. So he, the conversation that was going on, we know that wasn't a faith. Wasn't a faith. We'll see this. Can I tell you where there's... Where there's where the countenance is fallen, can I tell you, you don't have God's word? Then one of the men whose name was Cleopas uh, answered and said to, unto him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? In other words, they still think he's a stranger. They don't know who he is. And he says to them, What things? Like, t- tell me what happened. Like, no, like what happened? And they said to him, The things that concerning Jesus of Nazareth. You know, who was a prophet, mighty indeed. So here you have these disciples calling Jesus a prophet, not a Messiah. Mighty indeed. And word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him, they condemned him to death, and how he was crucified. But underline, you might underline this, but we were hoping. We were hoping. We had hoped, your translation might say. We once held hope that. We once held hope that he was going to redeem Israel. So they don't see him as the redeemer. They they have yet to believe that Jesus was the Christ. 
Peter, who's not there because of condemnation and having denied him three times, is not in this mix. Okay? Anyway, hoping that it was he was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things have happened. People even came and told us, yes, indeed. This is the testimony. Yes, indeed. Certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find him or his body. They came and, and they said that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. In other words, we heard these ladies tell stuff, but they're just, they don't know what they're talking about. I, they're just, they're, they're using reason to disqualify somebody's testimony. Have you ever been there where you disqualify somebody else's testimony because of your experience? Someone can say that God came through this way. Let's just talk about the testimony of finances and God coming through for them. And, da, 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 and you're like, yeah, that's cool. That happened because of this. Or these women's testimony is because they, you know, they didn't, they've been up all night and they're hallucinating, you know. You, just, you disqualify even people's testimonies. When they did not find his body, they came and said, we saw visions of angels. And, the, and then he says, and certain of those who were, were with us went to the tomb, in other words, and found it just as it was as the woman had said, and they did not see. But him they did not see. Then, he, then Jesus said to them, you fools. You've been fooled. Here, you ready? Watch this. I'm going to reach all the way through my brain into my mouth. Did you see that? How about this one? Like, Tom, I got your nose. Look it, look it. No, you want your nose back, buddy? Nope, I'm not giving it to you. Go, give me my nose, give me my nose. There you go. You remember that? Did you, did you ever have a grandpa that was good at that? Like, watch this, I'm going to pull my finger off. You know? You were fooled. Because the hands were quicker than the eyes. In other words, your eyes were fooled. And he's saying, you fools. Your eyes are fooled. Your eyes are fooled. Can I tell you, our eyes are fooled so often? He says, you fools, you and slow of heart to believe. You are fooled when you're slow of heart to believe. In all that the prophets had spoken, he said, ought not the Christ have suffered all these things? And to enter his glory. And beginning at Moses, here's what he does. He opens scripture. Expounded them the scriptures concerning himself. Wow, it's interesting. He didn't say, guys, look, it's me. Holding the hand, holding the foot. Spear in the side, it's me, I'm Jesus. See, see the twinkle? No, what did he do? He, he brought the word to them. Okay, now let's keep on going here. Then they drew near the village, and, and they were, there's 28, and they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, he blessed it, and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And here's what they say. They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us? Here's what they were brought back to, the way that God speaks to them. God was speaking to them the whole time. We're to recognize God. We're to recognize the truth of his word. We're to hold faith by his words. Where? When they, to the heart. Okay? This is how when you hear a message of the word of God, even when, because us humans are extremely, um, what the Bible says where there's many words, there's, there's sin amounts. In other words, I can stand here and I can teach the word and do my best to teach it um, with such purity and such uh, integrity and, and still stumble and, and maybe dis. But the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And, you're, and, and he's not only the teacher, he'll take the words that come out of my mouth and, and put them into you to where they're truth. And, they, and to where you hear it, the, pro, the proper and the right way. I'm thankful for that, that I'm dependent upon one greater than me. Yes. And that that's who's the teacher, not, not me. 
even though we study to show ourselves approved and all of those things. I, I, there's a rest in that. And he says, did our hearts not burn within us while, we talked with the, while he talked with us on the road? And what were they hearing? Their hearts. And while he opened the scriptures to us, can I tell you where you hear is when the scripture is open? Don't try to hear from God if you're not going to open the word. If you're not going to open the word or you're not going to come sit under the word. Now, I didn't say hear the word. I said sit under the word. Come, un, come under the word. Lord, speak to me today. I'm, I'm listening. Whatever you want to say. And, and your heart, he'll speak to you. So we, we, we know that um, the power is in Scripture, not evidence. It's not somebody's testimony. It's not, uh, it's not proof of, let me, I won't believe until, until I put my hand in this hide and I do this. No, no, that's not. Um, what gives light to you and me is the unfolding of the Word. It's the unfolding of the Word. And it's what the enemy is after. Um, <clears throat> so the enemy's after that. And all of them... Um, Mm, thank you, Lord. How do I want to do this? Oh, thank you, Lord. Every promise of God, the enemy would love to come after. Let me ask you this. If you're in a, if you're at your buddy's house, maybe you're in your mom, you know, you're there and they have you over. Maybe it's your first time being there. They got a big house. Big house. Dad's a doctor. Mom's a lawyer. They got candy. They got the, one of those fridges in the garage that's full with drinks. And it's not like Mountain Lightning. It's Mountain Dew. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? They got the stuff. And you're kind of just like, they leave the room. You're just kind of sitting there and like, I don't know if you've ever had, had this, like a, where money just kind of like lays around. Uh, just You make money, it just lays around. It's in your glove box. It's just, it's just around. And so you're sitting there, and there's a $20 bill that you see on the couch because money just falls out of their pockets, and, you know, I could use a 20, you know. You know what I mean? I could use a 20. So what do you do? You pick it up, and you, what do you do with it? What do you do with it, Chris? Huh? What do you do with it? Yeah. You wouldn't take it. Okay. Why? Because it's wrong. So the enemy just told you to take it, though. But you're going to resist that? Hmm. Could it be as simple as every promise of God, all of the word of God, the enemy comes for the word. Anytime you see the word of God resisting the devil isn't just about not thinking dirty thoughts? Can I tell you, resisting the devil when he tells us in his word, and you can listen right here, about the price that Jesus paid for you? And <coughs> <coughs> uh, just got a sore throat. I, I just, uh, gosh, it's probably that COVID R19 chicken flu swine stuff. <laughs> I don't know what they're calling it. Man, I hope I don't get it as bad as last time. I had it like four weeks and out of work and all that. That was really hard on the family. My, you, what, here, let me just say it like this. $20 bill? Oh, yeah, I'll just take that. Which might as well. I mean, it's, you're being stolen from. You're, you're, let's resist the devil there. So what does it look like to resist the devil there? How, how do I resist the devil? With the word of God. I don't look for an antidote and look for, well, I just need some Sudafed. Well, great, take some Sudafed. I'm not against Sudafed or ibuprofen or, or <laughs> what are those drinks called? Zoe? Those are pretty good. I'm giving my wife a hard time because I told her I had like six of them. Energy drinks. <clears throat> anyway. Um, I'm not against that. God's not against you having Tylenol or any of that, but he doesn't like you being robbed from concerning the things that he's paid for. Can I tell you that the enemy likes to take a lot of things from us? Go ahead and hit play on this video. We'll just see how we go. We'll maybe go about 
I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. And, and you'll, you're going to hear this. And all of God's promises, it doesn't, not just healing, prosperity. Man, I just thought we were going to, you know, whatever it might be. Um, the 2920 mark. And didn't act upon it, didn't do it. So then, you see, I said to Brother Williams, the Bible said, resist the devil, and you'll flee from it. Back it up a little further. I stood there I to start in that to God. God. Where is it? That's a man that stands when the storm's on. The storm's coming to all of us because we're living in this world where Satan is God, and he'll see to it that they come. Notice that uh, the storm came to both of them. One stood and the other one didn't. The one that stood was the one, bless God, that had the words of Jesus, the word of God, in other words, and did it, did it, acted upon it. The one that failed was the one that did not have the word of God or didn't accept it at least and didn't act upon it or didn't do it. So then, you see, I said to Brother Williams, the Bible said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I stood there in that... Uh, and that's the way I got my start teaching faith, just on a one-to-one -one basis. I very seldom taught it in church. I'd refer to it. But I stood there. I wasn't even a teacher in those days, 39. And I talked to him about an hour, and I, I just kept on until I finally got him to see it. Okay, let me pause you. You're the, where we ripped that recording, and we started it at seven minutes originally, and now you're at 29.20. It's going to be uh, probably 22-something. Because I, I don't know. Brad, where's Brad? Is, would that be correct? Or is it still the whole log of the video? Or is it just the ripped portion? It's just, it starts at the seven minute? Yeah, is what you... Okay, <clears throat> it's not going to work then based on that 29. We're, our times are off because of how we captured a larger portion. Here's what he's talking about. Um, and this would be, this is some of the most, I think the title of this video is The Most Important Thing You Need to Know About Healing. And, that, and what he's talking about in this video is that ultimately all, he, he, he lays the, some foundation of things that were taught in, that, in the meetings and, and the, you know, some uh, lessons beforehand. But in this one, he's talking about how the enemy would love to take, uh, take your healing and how you have to resist it. And so he tells some stories here about how um, this one guy, which we were kind of towards the end of that story, uh, he's like, well, I thought I was healed. I thought I, thought I was because he had something for 25 years. He got healed. But then after about three months, it started coming back. And here's what he said. I thought I was. Why? But, but I guess I'm not. Instead of resisting. And so he talks about resisting the devil. And, and <clears throat> what do you do to resist the devil? You put the word of God in your mouth. You resist him. You resist the devil. What is the devil? I, I, got, I got this is where I wanted to go, where we went right at the very beginning. What is the devil? The one who throws a thought that is opposed to truth. Th this is what's truth. What's truth? His word is truth. What does the enemy come for? The word. So anytime I see or have a thought that opposes the word, let me tell you, it will be reasonable. It will be so reasonable and so well thought through that you'll be able to think it from one side to the other, and it'll make sense. But you'll be deceived. So what does he say? Resist the devil, anything that opposes what God's word says. Sometimes you're going to have to resist him. The Bible says resist him, and this is James 4, 7, and stand firm. Resist him. Ugh. Mom! He pushed me. No. Resist him and stand firm. What? Stand firm. E Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go there. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 12, I think it is. I don't, I don't have, I don't think I have uh, any of that down in my notes. I don't. But <clears throat> pull up Ephesians 6, 12 through the end of the chapter, and we're going to just talk about resisting the devil. Um, to resist the devil, you got to use you got to use uh, more than just this. Like resisting the devil doesn't look like hiding. Yeah. Resisting the devil, you have one offensive weapon. Well, really two, because he talks about prayer, right? 
in, in, in prayer right, right at the end here. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. He's talking about the battle that you're, you're fighting. Um, next verse. We're going to go all the way to the next. Therefore, put on. Therefore, so because of this, because of what you're wrestling against, he says, put on the full armor of God so that when your day, the day of evil comes, in other words, it will come, e- evil will come, a storm will come, uh, you'll be able to stand, uh, to stand your ground. I love this. Uh, the, 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 the righteous are to walk by faith. Did you know there's to be an advancement in your life? I love that about God. That he wants to take you, he wants you to run a race, and he wants you to run in such a way that you win. He wants you to uh, fight and not fight like you're beating in the air. He wants you to arrive and to finish your course. He doesn't want you shipwrecked or to stop short. He wants you to be able to say, well, I, it is finished just like Jesus said or like Paul said. I finished my race. I've, like, like this is what God, God wants you to advance. So can I tell you that to, to, for you, that desire is a God desire in you to want to to, to move forward in, and, and to, to grow and to conquer. That's God, especially when it's submitted to him. Okay? But he says, therefore, put on the armor of God when you're able to stand your ground. After you have done everything to stand, he says, stand. You've done everything, and he says, stand. Stand firm then. In other words, don't move still. Don't, don't move because your eyes told you something different. Don't move because you heard something different. Don't move because of what you see, because your eyes are deceptive, but stand firm. Stand firm, <clears throat> then with the belt of truth, get, this is the, the word of God, truth. This is what the word says, truth. This is like it holds everything together, right? Uh, with around your race, the ble- breastplate of righteousness, this is huge. Well, the reason this has happened is because you did this and this and this and this. And that's why you're having to deal with this. How many, this, is, this is important. How many of you know you won't? Yeah, you're right, you're right. I deserve this. Jesus paid the price for sin. We, we were talking about this this just today. God, God doesn't have mercy on sin. He has mercy on people, but he dealt with sin. And so this is why I know I can be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because he paid the price for my sins. So righteousness? No. I, I, under the blood. Okay, Ready, uh, and then put, put your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the good news or the gospel of peace. I love this. It's, it's not just the carrying of the message to other people, but just understanding that there is a gospel of good news and peace and wholeness that allows you to stay in that place of standing, that the promises of God, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. To set, he talks about setting captives free. He talks about the recovery of sight to the blind. He talks about healing brokenhearted. If your heart's broken, can I tell you, Jesus came to heal that? That's so cool. If your heart's broken, you don't have to go through life with a broken heart because of a a loss or a lost relationship or, a, or anything God can restore, but even more than that, he'll heal your heart so that you don't go through life with a hurt ear, a troubled heart, but instead you can know that God's speaking and he's not done with you because it's not your call, it's his call. Anyway, so in addition, so he has, you have these gospel shoes. You're able to stand. I don't know about you, but I just got some new shoes. Um, I really like them. Anyway, but I don't know. Even though I went to get new shoes yesterday, uh, my feet still got tired, you know, because we're shopping. And I had to find a bench, you know, and sit down for a little bit, you know. And when you don't have, you get tired when your feet aren't, when you don't have the right shoes. You get tired of standing. When you don't know that God wants you whole, when you don't know that he, the, God, the good news is the gospel, it's an all-encompassing wholeness, it matters. He says, again, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flames of the evil one, the, the, the shield of faith. It, it, it's what did, what did God say to you? What, did, what, did, what have you heard? What have you heard? What, this is faith. Faith comes, what have you come under? And then... It's able to quench, but then he says, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and go after the enemy. 
This is why you don't need another word. This is not why you don't need to just somebody else's file. You need the word of God. Because you need to go after the one who's going after you. Because there is someone going after you. And, so, and everyone else in this world. Why? Because you're the one that God loves. Do you know that? Do we, do we know that that's why? Because God loves you. God loves you so much. This is why, this is why Satan's after you. Because he wants to hurt your father. Think of the value you must hold that the enemy knows, and so often we don't. That he's going after you to take from him what he loves the most. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give to those who simply ask him? This, these things matter. But resist him and go back to verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. With this in mind, be alert, always keeping prayer for all the Lord's people. I, I, I just want, to, I want us to resist the devil. Is, that's what I want us to do. I want to be a resisting church. Resist the devil. How do you, and I want us to, how do you resist the devil? Like, what are you supposed to do with it? Sometimes we're listening to all this information and we're like, what are we supposed to do? Well, you're not going to get your direction from the news. You're going to get your direction from the Lord. This is why it's so important for us to give attention to the lamp of the word and where he'll light our path, he'll give us direction. If you're supposed to take a stand in politics, it's going to be more than sharing stuff on Facebook. Can I tell you that? Can I tell you you're going to have to put on some kind of sign and run for some kind of office and spend some kind of dollars and stand for some stuff and get some mud thrown at you and all that kind of stuff and believe God for his grace to stand in a place and be a beacon of truth amidst all and navigate what is so unclear. Because if I say yes to this, they got this going on. If I say no to that, they got this going on. So what do I do? You know, darned if I do, darned if I don't. No, Lord, what do you say? And you stand in that place, and what do you say as you stood into that place of politics, as you stand in that place, as you stand in that place as a teacher at school? You don't say what they say you can or can't say. You say whatever the Lord tells you to say because you are under authority. This is key. This is key to everything. This is as a mom and dad. As a, well, everyone else is like, no, this, is, this matters. And we're just talking tonight about resisting the devil who would love to take from you what God says you can have. And one of the things that we've been talking about for the last few weeks is what Christ did on the cross before, when he was beaten before the cross. He was beaten for us. Healing is a gift for you and me. Can we resist him? Do you got the word of God on the matter? Because if not, you don't need another word. You don't need to go to the doctor and get a good report. What you need is a God report. Get a God report and stand firm and then stand firm and stand firm. And you know what? You can testify of what God has done, has done, because it was by your stripes you will be healed, and then it went to were healed. This is Isaiah, and then you got 1 Peter 2.24. But it's up to you whether or not you will resist the devil or will just give him way. So anyway, we're just... I just believe God's wanting our foundations to be strong. God, we gotta, we got to stand for what, God, what his word says. And we need to be not so moved by what we see or what we feel and be given to our, just our eyes. But we need to learn to recognize this voice because there's so many people that are looking and de- desiring to hear about what God has to say. And what, what is, can I tell you? It wasn't until God said to me through somebody else who I am that I couldn't see that it changed my life. Can I tell you that we just quote Romans ten seventeen about faith comes by hearing the word of God, but can I tell you that's in that context was all of salvation comes. Romans 10, 9 and 10, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is the Lord. You be saved, for it's with the heart man, you know, believes with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But how are they going to hear unless somebody tells them? But how are somebody going to tell them unless they be sent? 
because how beautiful are the feet of those that carry the good news. And I, I might have got one scripture out of there because he says faith comes now. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Like that's that passage there. Like somebody had to tell me. That's scripture. Somebody had to tell me about the gospel. Whether it was somebody putting a Bible in a hotel room drawer. The Gideons put, get, getting in, get in getting, get, Gideons getting in. Or a teacher after class telling me about God's love for me. Or a, a lady sitting in that third row at church, second row at church, seeing a young man on the front row and just willing to get out of her comfort zone and acknowledge what she heard here and speak to my hear. God, speak to hear. If we'll speak from here and we'll speak to here, we'll hold on. I'm just telling you, God's word you can know something in your heart that your head won't be able to grasp yet. Can I tell you there's times that I haven't had the money? You ever been there? You haven't had the money, but you just knew. What do you know? God's coming through. Why? Because you got his word on it. Because he spoke to your heart. He said, I'll, I'll supply all your needs. But he, he, you heard that. I, I got you. You've been, I, I got you. Can we hold to that, those words, the words of our heart that doesn't always make sense to our head? And not can we just only hold to the words of our heart, but could we, could we speak forth the words of our heart and could we resist the devil? Can we stand tonight? This is one of the ways, you know, we resist them with the words of our mouth. Oh, thank you, Lord. First Corinthians 15 just talks about this. He says, if you hold fast to the end, you're going to have to hold fast. You're going to have to hold fast uh, to the word of truth. Do you know? You're going to have to hold fast. And we do that with, with, with words. We do that. And um, we're, going to, uh, we're going to do that tonight. Uh, we'll, we can do offering buckets in the back if, for, for, the, for giving. But this right here, what we're going to do, I want to, I want to resist the devil financially here tonight. Um, and this display of words this was in a truck going to get a weed eater okay I'll put it up on the screen the, the offering uh, this is not an offering declaration this is a giving declaration I want to be able to give I want to be able to sow like I've never sowed before what comes to my heart I want to be able to do that's what I want I'll, I want to make the move to do what the Lord's asking me to do period and that's where this came from. This didn't come. There's no scripture and verse here. This is an immaculate reception where the Lord began to speak to me. And he's like, and I had a notepad. I had to get in the back seat driving down I-40, you know. And began to just write what the Lord was saying. I want you to say this. And I want you, I want our people, to, I, want, I want to put something before us. I want us to not only resist, but I want us to declare. And, and in a sense, just like John the Baptist, build a road to where it seems like there's wilderness. Can I tell you the same thing we're doing for finances you can have concerning your blood pressure? Concerning your teeth? That was for somebody. Concerning your teeth. The Word of God can work on your teeth. Your eyesight your children the same way what do you say Lord and then this is what I say I come under and where I come under grace can flow grace can flow I come under and I say what you say but this is <laughs> can I tell you a troubled heart when you get a heart thankful it calms the waters of the heart this is one of the keys to, to calming a heart. He said, with, let you, with thanksgiving, like this is the Philippians, I, I didn't quote that piece, but he said, with thanksgiving, let you, this is so key. So, Father, today we pause to reflect and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you 
right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps in that place of our lives. We'll bring increase to your kingdom. Amen. My body is healed and whole. What, like, put the word. Let's, re, let's be a resisting church. Because that's what God wants. A fighting church. And hold on to the word of God. And recognize that the way that he's going to speak to you. And, and we got to fall in love with the word. Because this is how we know him. This is where my foundation is built. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your word tonight. Thank you for just being so good to be a teacher that we can trust you to speak to our hearts you tell us to have faith like a child you said that your children are led by your spirit Lord thank you for a trusting of hearts just a heart that would trust again no hurt hearts healed hearts whole hearts not troubled and that there would be childlike faith just so simple and so quick to believe we wouldn't be fooled and we wouldn't be slow to believe but we'd trust and we'd respond and we'd make our move according to what you speak to hearts and we would let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path that your word would bring direction in this time. It would bring application and that there would be an advancement and a moving forward in your kingdom. There would not just be busyness in this church. There would not just be busyness in homes, but there would be advancement. That there would be moving forward concerning families, concerning gifts and callings and plans. That there would be advancement and moving forward. And we thank you for it, that your word spoken to these hearts, to our hearts, would be that which lights our way. Both in this house and out of this house. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, close with this reminder that this weekend with the rain, which we've been believing for, for the fall colors. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're having, I'm excited about that. I love fall. Uh, but we're not having our, our fall night this weekend. Uh, but Brother Ken Taylor will be here and uh, talking a little bit about everywhere in the world. Um, this house is connected in a lot of places. There's a lot of seed in the ground, and God come and bring testimony about those things and uh, just to share with us. So get here. Uh, we'll see you Sunday. Other than that, God bless you. Have a great week.